Well, here we are. Um, it's May, almost June, and um, the grapes are formed. You can see the little bunches there. Yeah, they look like they're going to be good this year. And what Gary's doing is um, this time of year is when we start doing um, some vine training. Everything's already been pushed up into the wires, but we want to make sure that there's enough oh, airflow and sun um, for powdery mildew and also to help the growth. So um, we we'll periodically go through and maybe take a few leaves out just to make sure that there's enough airflow. Well, this is the Syrah vineyard. It's just uh, maybe an acre, not very much actually, and they're all head pruned and they've just been trimmed up because all of the vines are very, I don't know, vigorous, I guess you'd say, and all the vines end up on the ground and then we have trouble getting the tractor through to spray and netting is a problem, but you can see that the Syrah is always the last to develop, so they're just barely out of the flowering stage now with the grapes. But they look pretty. So what we're going to do now is uh, take a trip around the corner uh, to our new little vineyard that we planted a couple of years ago and see how things are going there. Just say goodbye to the main property. It's looking pretty good. The flowers are looking great. It's coming up on our left. So here's the new vineyard we planted, and boy, are the the vines are really vigorous. Look at this. It's like we've got some good fruit set on it too. This is the one we're doing what's called a field blend. So we've planted a combination of Albarino, Pinot Gris, and Viognier, um, you know, alternating rows. The goal here is um, they'll be harvested together, they'll we'll ferment them together, um, age it, and then bottle it as a blend right from the get-go. This is like amazing. I can't believe how much fruit is on these, on these vines. We're hoping for a small harvest this year. It looks like we're going to get one. Hopefully we can keep the powdery mildew out. And hopefully everything ages at the same pace. to run ahead. We picked avocados uh, a few weeks ago and now all the little new ones are coming out. They bloomed uh, over the last few months. We had the bees here. But now's the time that we um, start worrying about something called thrips. So you can see the two little, Gary's pointing at them, the two little avocados there. Yeah. So how do we tell about thrips? How do we know? Well, I've got an entomologist that comes out and checks uh, around the grove. He has a special magnifying glass and he will look at the back side of the leaf and once his, uh, he, he'll count how many little thrips bugs are on that leaf and once the average gets up to about oh three or four per leaf uh, he'll recommend that we spray. Of course we bring a helicopter in and spray the whole grove uh, uh, to kill all those little bugs. That, what, they, what they do is they they start munching on these little avocados while the skin is real tender and uh, they scar it. And then uh, typically if the scar is bigger than your, say, your thumbnail, they'll downgrade that avocado to a number two. And that means instead of getting uh, 50 cents for it, we get about 30 cents for it. Okay. So hopefully this year, no thrips. <laughs> they don't come every year, so um, maybe not this year too. Well, this tree has quite a good fruit set. There's lots of little tiny avocados on it, so that's good. Um, but the tree right next to it, there are no avocados on, uh, no flowers. One of the one of the real frustrating things about avocados is that they're alternating year. Uh, they they bear fruit in alternating years a lot of times, and that's a lot of studies are being done to try to figure that out. So here's a tree, beautiful tree, no avocados. Depressing. Well, we harvested all of our leucodendron in uh, March of this year. So all of this is theoretically next year's uh, harvest. Um, the leaves sometime around next February or March, 
the top leaves will turn yellow and make sort of a little flower with a little red cone in the middle. Um, so everything looks like it's doing okay here. We had to uh, we had to do a lot of replants though. We had a lot of um, uh, we lost some flowers this year. Not sure exactly if it is from Phytophthora, which is um, something that resides in the soil, or if it was from the cold weather, or or what. But so far, so good for June. Well, this is our garden this year. I don't have a lot planted. Masara is doing better with her onions, as you can see over there. Yes, than I'm doing with mine, which you can hardly see them at all. I don't know. She's got a green thumb, and I don't. Asparagus, we're letting go now. All asparagus season's over, so now we'll just let the green stuff grow and then cut it down in the fall. Got uh, more zucchini than we know what to do with. Tomatoes are green, but not up yet. We've got some gladiolas coming up. That's cool. There they are. Well, that's it for uh, June here at Woodworth. It's such a pretty month with everything's blooming and growing and so much promise for the fall. Um, so what will happen now is um, that later on this month we'll be netting the vines. Um, and we'll be praying that the bees don't get us. We'll continue to spray every seven to ten days for powdery mildew. Um, we'll watch the avocados for thrips and have to bring in a helicopter if it looks like we're going to get them. And other than that, we'll just um, keep watering and hope for the best.